CD Projekt Red have certainly got themselves into the headlines last year in this on the back of Cyberpunk 2077, but it's not all gone to plan. That much is known. In probably the most hyped game since Watch Dogs, it also failed to live up to expectations, but they're slowly releasing patches to get it further along than the alpha state or beta state it really launched in. So patch 110 comes out and obviously 111 on top of that, what does it do to the versions here? I'm going to take a look at every console version and see if we finally have the game they promised. So working through the stack, the top of the range, those next generation BC versions which I covered in my previous top 7 games, they're still as good as ever. Well, maybe slightly not as good as ever. See, the Xbox versions generally, across every one, this patch has made things worse. That's quite simple, that's quite evident. So they seem to have improved some of the visual quality. Evidently across all versions what they've done now is they've reduced or tweaked the TAA settings and added in or at least enhanced the sharpening filter on those elements. So you now get slightly sharper and cleaner image quality that looks better on every single screen be it a 1080p or a 4k one. That generally adds a lot to the image quality and that's a good thing and that's a bonus. But this is a very large set of issues they need to fix, not only performance but general game breaking bugs. There's ones persistently in the title that have always been there and they crop up from time to time and generally they're probably never going to fix them. These examples of falling through the floor and then the checkpoint reloads you back at the same point, forcing you to go back to another save, to minor things like characters stuck in T-poses or floating through the air. Generally there's just too many in the game to really take you away from that gameplay when you're just trying to enjoy the moment and then something crazy happens or worse still the game breaks and you get stuck where you are you can't go to the next checkpoint there's still a stack of those to fix throughout the title but performance is worse there's no doubting it you can see the comparisons here between the ps5 and the xbox one the playstation version does seem to run ever so slightly better now across all versions not massively but just enough the playstation 5 in these tested sections now pretty much is a lock 60 fps it doesn't drop that often at all but the Series X has gone backwards. It now drops more frames than it did last time I tested it on version 1.06. That's not a big step forward. Some of that appears to be the fact they've made changes to the resolution and also the LOD. So they're now drawing images further out and that's evident in some of the sequences here. Look as I pause, you can see that on this pillar there's far more detail and geometric density of this pillar than there is on the PlayStation which is completely missing. Now some of this comes from the fact that on the Xbox platform you can share saves across different generations and that can sometimes bring across changes to the graphical modes, this is not just exclusive to Cyberpunk, and it can make the game run worse, so just be aware of that. But testing it here, they've definitely increased the LOD on the Series X version and pushed it out a little further and therefore you get more lighting but they've also created more issues with the rendering and therefore you get more bugs sometimes the shadow maps don't draw in sometimes the normal maps are out of line and sometimes you just get massive shadow casting glitches texture warping and UV coordinate issues here which happen throughout the title and this generally happens on Xbox far more often than it does on the PlayStation now a lot of these issues seem to come from CPU and obviously memory so Physics can cause issues, cause the game to lock up, happens more often on the Xbox One, and then it can also cause sound to glitch out, slow down and judder when it happens because the CPU is getting hammered. There's so many issues in the code base that generally it seems to affect the lower performance hardware because obviously it's struggling more when it goes awry. All versions glitch like this, but it happens more often on the Xbox platforms. And again, performance is worse on those platforms as well. But some of that is down to the differences in the graphical settings, or at least the feature set that's in the title itself. The Xbox versions have generally more characters, more cars, more people, so that puts more load on the engine. Now, resolution-wise, it's still running at 2133 by 1200, pretty much fixed, it looks like, still on the PlayStation 5. And it's dynamic and more often than not 1920 by 1080 p in this 60 FPS mode on the Series X. Moving to the 30 FPS mode on the Series X, it's more often than not 2880 by 1620, but again, dynamic. So, moving away from the next gen versions down that one rung to the premium consoles of last generation and the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro again perform pretty well generally on that 30fps target, but they don't always hit it. 
and the Xbox One X misses it slightly more often than the PS4 Pro. Now, again, it isn't consistently bad, and it, again, you have to be aware of the versions you transfer across and using cloud saves and all that can make things worse, but you do get inconsistencies, and sometimes you have to restart the game, sometimes you have to restart your console, but overall, the Xbox One X is sub-30 too often. And the PS4 Pro does dip, but it gets back to that 33 millisecond times quicker than the Xbox One X, which consistently in the heavier sections just sits under it, as you can see here. Now, some of that is down to the fact that it runs at a high resolution on average. It's got the additional geometry, the lighting, the bloom. All of those areas are pushed further out the lot. So it is drawing more, there's more characters. So it's just too high for the hardware. They need to just cut it back. And generally, this means that the performance on the Xbox One X is inconsistent. And you've got to bear in mind that those carryover saves can make it slightly worse. Here I'm jumping back to a brand spanking new start from scratch on the Xbox One X with no carryover saves from generations. And you get slightly better performance, slightly more tearing, but it's only a few percentile improvement and really you still get the same lows and the same inconsistencies. So it doesn't really fix the issue, it just alleviates it ever so slightly. The cross-functional saves is one of those issues around the XDK. The fact that you can develop on one platform and push it out across multiple means you don't really optimize that hardware. And then you get carryover, like I'll cover in a moment, where the Xbox One S acts as higher LOD that it really should handle because of the fact they're not optimizing to one single platform. But overall, the performance on the Xbox One X isn't... It's inconsistent. It's slightly more inconsistent than the PS4 Pro. And the issues of the cross-functional saves make it slightly worse. It's got a sharper image and it's got more detail, but it comes at the cost of performance. And to me, it's just not the right choice. They need to scale that back. And talking of scaling back, let's bring us to the base consoles. And really, it's a tale we've seen before. There's no real winners here at all. The PlayStation 4 is bad. The Xbox One X is worse. Uh, it's as bad as it ever was. It doesn't look any better at all. Generally, it's into the teens far, far more often than it should be. It tears all the time. Adaptive V-Sync is causing tears and then drops. And then because of the heavily stifled image, it, the screen space reflections, the shadows, everything is dithered quite heavily on the shading passes to reduce cost, but it makes the whole image look very noisy, and very blurry and very soft. And it looks old because it's such a low resolution combined with all those cutbacks to reduce that. And it's memory bound a lot, so it judders, it's double buffer, that makes it skip into 50 and then 67 milliseconds. So that happens across every machine. It just can feel very inconsistent. And it's worse on all of these with the woeful performance in these sections of Tin Can Alley into the low teens and that's just unacceptable like i said before it's generally just unplayable on these machines it's a just a very badly optimized title across these base consoles because it really needs to have much much more sacrifice i'd turn off screen space reflections instantly i'd cut down on the shadow maps i'd certainly cut back on a lot of the character models in the title as well there's so much more that they can do on these platforms but they really need to slow down. Less haste, more speed. If you're rushing in software development to get something out the door, you're likely not going to make the best product and probably make mistakes or miss things. And that's what's happening. They've rushed out 110 and then they've rushed out 111 because they've got some issues that were caused by 110. So by consistently pushing out patches, you can actually make a negative impact on the audience. And that's what I feel is happening. They need to just slow down get their act together, get a game that's actually updated at the right level, test it, get the quality control in there, and then push that with the next generation patch properly on the Series X and the PS5 and reinvigorate the title to bring it back to that marketplace that may then pick it up. Because let's be honest, the Xbox One and PS4 is where the majority of players bought this game, and it's the majority of players that have suffered from this version. And sadly, for the question at the start of the video, this is not the patch that we were looking for. It can't be recommended it makes a change to the game. It does update things, but not always for the better. If you got all the way to the end, I salute you. Remember to keep it IGN for more of these performance videos. I'll see you on the next one. Sup?